So you're getting ready to have a life-changing procedure in the form of bariatric surgery. What do you need to know in order to best prepare? Today, I'm going to be sharing tips that are very practical for both pre- and post-op to help you prepare for this adventure. This was information that I wish I had access to before I had surgery, and honestly, immediately after. I had medical info, but I didn't have any of these practical tips. If you're new here, I'm Chelsea, the founder and creator of Berry Tail Coaching. This channel where it kind of all started as well as on Instagram where I'm active most days of the week if you'd like to follow along there. And if you're here because you're looking for more real life bariatric surgery information, I think you've come to the right place. I tend to share a lot of personal stories from my lived experience, but also stories from my clients and the communities that I get to be a part of to try to show you what life really looks like after weight loss surgery. So I hope you'll subscribe and be a part of our growing and wonderfully supportive Berry Tail family. I wanted to make this video for you because when I was researching weight loss surgery, and side note, when I say researching, I am a firstborn Aries type A person, so I had color-coded notebooks, binders with the pretty little tabs and separators. I was doing so much pre-op work and I couldn't find someone or information that consistently showed up about real stories. I found a ton of medical information, which I also had from my lovely clinic, but I couldn't find what life was really like, both pre and post-op. When I was pre-op, I wanted so desperately to have every morsel of information in order to prepare because that's how I calm my own anxiety, is by being hyper over prepared. I wanted to know, what did this look like a year out, two years out, five years out? What does normal look like after weight loss surgery? And I couldn't find that which was the impetus for starting this YouTube channel, but also one of the reasons why I wanted to film this particular video for you. I do often get asked via email, in my comments here, in DMs on Instagram, why don't I ever put out rules for before weight loss surgery, during and after. And the reason for that is because in my own experience and my very thorough research, if I do say so myself, I find that clinics all over the country for bariatric surgery do things differently. There are absolutely generalities for sure, particularly around pre- and post-op diets, but there's such a variation when you go state to state, clinic to clinic, and even into surgery sites that are more popular, like in Mexico. There isn't just one pre-op diet that fits all clinics. There isn't one post-op rules and regulations sheet that fits all clinics. And that's not to say that one is better than or more correct than another. They simply vary. Overall, the best thing you can do to be prepared is to make sure that you are following your surgeon's guidelines. I am not a medical expert. I am not a bariatric surgeon. And since they perform these surgeries, thousands of times, especially at clinics where weight loss surgery is the only kind of surgery they perform, they are going to know what's best for you, but I have some tips for how to prepare, which segues into tip number one, know the expectations pre and post op from your surgery center. Some clinics will do a liquid diet in the pre-op stage for three days, ranging all the way up to 14 days before surgery. What I will say that I know is that the reason for this is to shrink your liver, which makes weight loss surgery easier and safer for both the surgeons and you. So the liquid phase of pre-op is also so much harder than the post-op liquid phase because you still have a full stomach to work with. So the reason I say there are variations is because you could do a three-day clear liquid diet right before surgery. Not fun, 
but doable, or you could have an all liquid diet that includes clear liquids and protein shakes for seven days before surgery, which is what I had. And some of my clients have experienced having liquid diets, but also with one small protein-based meal for dinner, all the way up through surgery, ranging again from three to 14 days. I think knowing this information is really helpful before you have surgery, because then you are aware that doing something that we call a food funeral, where you binge every single meal that you love and think you may never get to have again, or at least not for a longer period of time, isn't something that you can feasibly do one, two plus weeks before surgery because your diet is going to be restricted for your own safety. So I think that's an important way to plan. If you are going to try to have last meals of specific things that you pace them out, maybe starting a month out so that you're spreading those meals over the course of 14 days rather than binging them one to two days before you have to switch to liquids. Side note. I am using this new lip gloss. I did not somehow, first of all, doesn't that kind of look like a gastric tummy? Just a little bit. I know now that this is a chili pepper and I love the color of this lip gloss, but if I told you that my lips were numb because they're burning off, that wouldn't be a lie. Also, when this gets on your tongue, I have a high tolerance for spice and whew, whew, this means business. My lips better look plumped. Let's talk post-op variations. In post-op land, the timing for diet phases varies. I started on 48 hours of clear liquids, though I have had clients who had to do a week of just clear liquids. That sounds very challenging. However, would be harder pre-op than post-op. After my 48 hours, I then transitioned to seven days of all liquid, but that included protein shakes too. And then for my stages, it was a week of puree, a week of soft, and then as tolerated. So my phases in general were about a week long, but I know there are conservative estimates because I've worked with clients who have two week phases. So keep in mind, again, that's going to vary, although most of the phases go clear liquid, liquid, puree, soft, and then as tolerated. The idea here is that you can start planning now. No matter how far out your surgery date may be, you can gather information from your clinic, from your surgeon, to start putting together a potential meal plan, grocery lists, and recipes. One of the things that I did to prepare a little bit last minute, I would have liked to have done it earlier, but I still did it, so I suppose it doesn't matter, is that I made a Pinterest board for each stage of my post-op diet. Inside, I was then able to curate a meal plan on a calendar for myself and my family, and then grocery lists of what I needed week by week. I turned my meals and my ingredients into a spreadsheet as well, so that way I could track my estimated protein per day. So it took all of the thinking of what am I going to eat away to quiet some of that food noise that I was experiencing post-op as FOMO and also anxiety about what this new tummy held for me. No pun intended. If you can get these plans from your clinic via email, I absolutely recommend that, so that way you can pull them up digitally wherever you are. I had printouts, so I then transferred them into my notes app so I could easily have access all the time. It's fairly common for my clients to tell me that they don't know what they're supposed to be eating post-op because they were given a one sheet with guidelines but nothing concrete in terms of meal or ingredients. This is totally okay. It's just frustrating if you're already in the post-op stage to be coming up against this challenge to have to meal plan. You are literally diving into a food-centric world when your tummy is so small and you're likely drinking soup, water, and protein shakes. My advice for you is don't wait until you're discharged from the hospital the day after surgery to formulate a plan about what you're going to eat and how you're getting in your protein. And I'm gonna say this because I love you. This is said with love because this is exactly what I did. 
Don't procrastinate because you're nervous or scared to ask for this information. You are your own best advocate. Ask for these documents early on. Even at an intake appointment where you are just there to ask questions, get this paperwork so you can start planning now. Use a grocery delivery service for the first four weeks post-op and during your pre-op liquid phase. Trust me, you may be hyper-organized, which I love for both of us, but when you step foot into that grocery store, everything's gonna be a temptation. Green veggies that you have always thought are disgusting, you will crave. Send somebody else or get a delivery service to send it to your house. It will eliminate a chore for you when you're already exhausted post-op and take away that FOMO and that temptation that comes with stepping into a literal store of food. Tip number two is all about testing your options. This is going to apply to your general prep and groceries as well. After surgery, only two things are going to matter protein and water intake. Start testing what kinds of protein are going to work for you. And I mean this in both a way that you can have a pre-made option, like a protein shake, but as well as a protein powder that you can mix into liquids, preferably when they're hot, because I find when they are not hot, it's harder to get them to dissolve, and that's gross. I think you should also test out foods for your puree stage because that's an in-between area. So can you get yourself to get over the texture of cottage cheese? Maybe if you put a little something in it, that could help. My sister trained herself to like yogurt before surgery, so that way after surgery she knew that this was a viable option for protein and puree stage. I think broth, bone broth particularly, is a really good choice. It helps with like melting the unflavored protein powder. It's great as protein on its own. Try to find things that are gonna work in your post-op life before you have surgery so that you're not testing things when your stomach is sensitive. Protein powders are going to vary based on what you're looking for. My original protein powder did not have collagen or biotin in it, though now it does five years out. But I loved an unflavored protein for things like broth, but also for my hot tea in the evening. Anywhere I could add protein powder, soup, etc., was really helpful. So find one that works for you. I think I struggled to find an unflavored one. There weren't that many unflavored options and now there are so many more. So buy some sample packs and see what you like. I also think testing is beneficial for vitamins. This is one of those things where you assume all vitamins will work the same. False. And don't just buy what your surgery center recommends for this because I find that the all-in-one bariatric vitamin upsets my stomach most of the time. There are a few brands that haven't, but in general, when they're heavy, it hurts my tummy, which you know how sensitive my stomach is because I did a video last week about dumping syndrome and the fact that years later, I'm still having it. I like to think about vitamins and supplements as an experiment post-op, so I try a bunch, but I think this is something that I wish I did earlier on, particularly with my supplements because I just assumed everything would be comfortable in my stomach and it turns out that it's not. So start now. Again, if you can get some samples of things or share from friends, even from your own clinic, that would be helpful. But knowing what vitamins you need to have, I will make sure that my vitamin video is also linked here because that gives you specifics and what supplements you might want. Think biotin, think thiamine. Would you be interested in an ashwagandha? Do some research what supplements will work for you. Tip number three is to cut the caffeine. And I know that that's a hard pill to swallow. I can't, with the puns today. Trust me on this one, you will wish you had if you don't. Personally, I did not do this. I did the exact opposite. I fueled my body with as much Diet Coke as I could get in my system without injecting Diet Coke into an IV directly into my veins. And then post-op, I was already tired, right? Your calorie deficit is huge. I suffered wild energy slumps 
emotional mood swings that some of it I do attribute to the fact that caffeine was no longer in my system and really intense headaches. Caffeine withdrawal is a very real thing. So look at how much time you have between now and your surgery date and start weaning yourself down now. Please don't go cold turkey. That will hurt you, it will hurt your body, but set a goal for each week. And if you can, because you're a star student, replace that caffeine with water. Hot tip, make your water more exciting. Right now, pre-op, you can have bubbles. One of my cute daughter's little friends calls it spicy water, seltzer water. I just love that. So make your water more fun. And then post-op, while you won't want bubbly water, you may want to add in some flavorings. After the initial week or two weeks from your surgery, you might want things like fresh fruit or berries in there. I like cucumber and mint to just give it a little extra something, you know, because you're going to be living off of water and a lot of liquids. It might as well be pretty and fun. Tip number four, prepare for a restaurant hiatus. My favorite way that I've seen this implemented is where you would speak to a partner, spouse, etc. if you have one, or if you are fabulous, sensational, and single, you can do this on your own without needing to talk to anyone. But the idea is that while you're not going to restaurants during your pre-op liquid phase and your post-op phase for quite some time, you can take the money that you would be spending at these restaurants and tuck it away for something fun later. So it's not, yes, you may just want to accumulate it in your bank account. I get that. But I think it's more fun if you put it aside to say, if you're, especially if you're doing this independently, I want this money for a new wardrobe. Or if you have a partner or a family, you could say, I'm putting aside this money so that at my one year surgiversary, we can go on a fabulous trip. I think that encourages the restaurant hiatus and also rewards you later. Please don't go out to eat right after surgery. I know your family's going to want to and that's so normal for them. But I want you to be selfish and put yourself and your needs first. I would argue that that's not selfish, that's self-care. And as we know, self-care is not selfish. I know that for some of us, we view being able to sit at a restaurant or a bar immediately post-op as a battle, a strength in our own willpower. Girl, this is not the time for that, okay? This is the time for rest and recovery. Don't put yourself in the way of temptation with food smells and alcohol and huge portions that you cannot enjoy right now. I promise you, you think I'm going for the company, but you will be distracted with your FOMO and maybe even triggered simply by being there. Stay home, follow your meal plan that you so organized for yourself pre-op, take care of yourself. Don't go out to eat right away. I literally didn't even sit with my family in the dining room until I was in my soft food stage. So for clear liquids, all liquids and puree, I ate separately from them. I did still cook because it made me feel like myself. I like to cook for my family post-op, probably around two to three weeks in, but I couldn't bring myself to even sit at the dinner table to watch them eat a meal that I prepared while I ate this much cottage cheese. If you are the chef of your household, cook some meals ahead of time for your family and put them in the freezer. Get a meal delivery service. We used and still use every plate so that way when I was recovering, my husband could follow the directions on every plate to be able to cook for him and my daughter until I was ready to do so again, which happened faster than I expected. And I wasn't actually interested in the meals per se. I just liked the preparation process. I actually think I have some free boxes for every plate. I will put whatever information I have below. I'm not an affiliate for them. I don't work with every plate. I simply love the service. So if I have anything on my personal account, I will link it in the description box. Tip number five. This one's a little less tangible, but it's all about understanding your binge eating. You might be thinking, Chels, if I could do this, I wouldn't even need bariatric surgery. Listen. After surgery, there is a myth 
that your hunger hormone named ghrelin goes away because 80% or more of your tummy has been removed. I'm sorry to tell you that this is false news. Yes, for the first two weeks post-op, you likely aren't going to experience hunger pangs. And if you're one of the lucky ones, this can last for like three months. It's easy to think in that time, I did it. I've cured myself of feeling hunger. I'm never going to want to binge eat again. The truth is you can't binge eat post-op without experiencing very intense pain in your stomach or dumping syndrome. Either way, it's bad. You have to find a new coping mechanism. So when that hunger hormone returns and you find yourself in that blackout phase of what can I eat to fill my emotional void, you have something else that's going to work for you on your roster for a plan. This is all about understanding your thoughts, emotions, and actions loop. What is driving this behavior? This work takes time. It also takes honesty, inner reflectiveness, and your ability to be vulnerable about what is causing these binge eat moments. Your inner mean girl has to be quieted in order for you to figure out what's going on. This isn't about judgment in your mind. It's about backtracking. This is my action. How was I feeling throughout the day? and knowing what the thoughts were that got you to those feelings. You have to understand how to intentionally think to avoid future binge eating. Yes, this is a lot. This is potentially months or even years of work. So don't go it alone. I wish I had done this crucial step before surgery. After surgery, you're already dealing with so many changes Adding on this layer of mindset work almost feels impossible. It's not, but it's hard. I'm offering a free mindset masterclass on how to understand your binges for this exact reason. I don't want it to take you months or years. I don't want you to do it alone. It starts enrolling this week, so I want to make sure that you are subscribed here because there will be notifications here as well as on Instagram. And bonus, if you're on my email list, you'll get first dibs at a variety of different seats. I am offering two live free masterclasses on how to understand your binges in order to stop them, whether you're pre or post-op. No matter what, this work needs to get done. Let's do it together. The goal of this free masterclass is to shorten your learning curve, learn from my mistakes, and give you the most effective tools to get over this roadblock. I hope you'll join me and that I'll get to see you in real time because it will be live. Again, it's free. I just want to give you the tools that I didn't have myself. So please consider joining if you're subscribed here or on my email list, those are going to be the two fastest ways to find out about getting a seat in this masterclass. Tip number six is about giving yourself a little treat in the form of a new water tumbler. This is a fun one. Because hydration and protein are the two most important things post-op, having a tumbler that fits your needs, and I tend to recommend one with ounces, particularly at the beginning, is going to be a critical tool for you, which gives you some excuse to spend what you want to spend. People like their water temperature different. So I have clients who said post-op, I could only stomach room temp water. Fine. Any tumbler will do. Personally, I like my water crisp ice cold, so I like a double insulated tumbler. Yeti and Stanley are my two favorite brands. It's like a little post-op treat present for you, like a push present after you have a baby, but a post-op present after your tummy gets cut. (laughs) Having a tumbler you love will romanticize this new critical part of your weight loss surgery success journey. You'll have a beautiful tumbler. You're more likely to drink out of it. You can take it with you as your water security blanket. All good things. Tip number seven sounds easier than it is to execute, and it is for you to plan for rest. 
If you need childcare after surgery, book this now. Call up your family, your friends, especially if you have little ones who you won't be able to lift right after surgery. Figure out what you need for time off from work, no less than one week, no less than one week, preferably two. Get everything in order. Again, this is about preparing so that you can spend your time post-op doing what you're supposed to be doing, which is sip, sip, sipping, and resting. That's it. Go to the library. Get yourself a stack of books that you've had on your Goodreads list for over a year. Just me. Just me. Get that stack ready. Get your Netflix shows that you're going to binge ready. It's the only binging you're going to do. It might as well be fun. I personally loved using 22 minute shows on Netflix as a barometer for what I was supposed to be doing. I would give myself an ounce deadline during those 22 minutes and then in between every show I would get up and take a walk around either my house or my yard because I had surgery in the summertime so it was warmer and easier to do that before I then plunked back down in my lovely lazy boy chair to start another episode. So I had a system going that built in hydration, protein, movement, and rest. It may seem like the recovery period is long, but it's actually really brief for most people. So rest. This is the time to heal and recover, not catch up on work, make more content, or hustle. Do not work from home. Do you hear me? Do not use this as an excuse in week one to just work from home. You need to sleep. Your calorie deprivation is going to be real. You need to actually rest your body. And while you're resting, you can plan the world's most amazing trip to Disney for your surge anniversary. Before we sign off today, I want to remind you that the information for the free masterclass is going to be in the description box below. This is all about how to overcome binge eating by understanding why it's happening. I hope you find that valuable and will join me. If you like these tips, please feel free to give this video a thumbs up. I feel like these are a little more tactical than some of my other mindset deep dive tips, so I'd love to know which you prefer. I hope you're having a magical February. I'm in my Valentine's Day colors. I thought this would be appropriate for this week's video, and that you know you're loved, beautiful, strong, and so wildly capable. I love you so much. I am 100% rooting for you, and I can't wait to see you in the masterclass. See you so soon and next week. Bye, friends.